Nick Cannon mornings on Power 106. It's time for up close and personal conversations. Yes, close conversations with people that I admire, people that are doing their thing in the game, and people that I have real relationships with. And this young lady is all of the above and so much Thank more. You. Uh, definitely going to give her the honor and the respect because she's a queen. Hello. Uh, but she got a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> I do. Uh, not only just her personal life, but she's an entrepreneur as well. So we're going to get into all of that. Uh, the the very outspoken, yet illustrious and beautiful Miss April Jones. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, you all over the place ringing bells. <coughs> uh, I see. Uh, uh, <laughs> you are hilarious. Now, this is the thing. I'm going to keep it a stack. Uh, yes. Just because, obviously, um, I know you. Yes. I don't really know. Uh, I don't watch loving Mm hip-hop so i don't uh, like sorry i mean even i don't watch it either but when i have watched it i see that like yeah it's reality show yeah yeah. so so we're gonna get into all of that and like obviously i'm also i'm an executive at viacom so i've actually produced episodes Mm -hmm. of the show and been a part of been on it before and stuff as well um when it when it initially first started Mm -hmm. just based off of just knowing how reality television works and someone who I produce a few different reality shows. So I know that everything that you see on television normally isn't the truth. Sorry to burst y'all bubble, but it's entertainment. Uh, But I feel like your storyline has gone outside of the television show and even become more elaborate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the only time we really get to see you share your side of the stories when you're like kind of on your own personal social media and even that's you know i i see that go viral and Mm -hmm. then people spin it the way they want to spin it so i felt like i wanted to give you at least a platform to kind of speak your truth say what you want to say uh and then not because i don't like getting in people's business and being messy (laughs) but obviously like i've you know the 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 gentleman that you have been involved with i know personally as well Uh um you know known Oh, and, and Fizz, like, you know, since they were kids, like, I've all, you know, it's, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. from working together and just really just kind of being a big homie, just I'm a little older than those guys, right. but it's just like I've, I've watched them grow into to men. So it's interesting when, you know, especially being on the show, I got to, like, talk about this stuff in the morning. And, you know, <laughs> Melissa Rios, who's not here, like, kind of yeah. does our celebrity court. And I'm like, whoa, it's, it's a lot going on. So yeah. I was like. Yo, I know, April, I, I, our kids have played together. 100%. <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm like, I want to at least just give you the opportunity to be like, yo, what's going on? Like, we're in, in the situation, because if anybody doesn't know, it feels like there might be, I would call it somewhat of a, a love triangle that's right. been presented. And um, what is the truth to that? And how? What's, what's your perspective? Well, I just feel like, you know, Let's just start with B2K. Right. Right. Uh-huh. People have this perception that this boy band was like a brotherhood and they right. were best friends. And, right. You know, and I understand that. I mean, I was one of those people that believed that, too. Yeah. You know? I mean, shoot, I was there. Right. I mean, when it when it was that. Right. I mean, it was B2K. Um, but also you have to remember. That <laughs> <laughs> you also have to remember the entertainment industry has PR, which is very good at their job of making, you know, certain things look like great branding right. so they looked like they were that yeah. um, but there were a lot of issues that they were having that i don't want to have to talk on yeah or any of that and not, again like business. we had we had immature marcus houston all of right. them here and we chopped it up and like again though like i said those are the guys that you know i kind of you know we grew up we're right. the same age and I, I remember when b2k started i remember when Omarion, before he was even in B2K, mm-hmm. when he was just doing like commercials, right? And, exactly. Yeah. And he had a the song called <laughs> "I Want to Be Like Puff," and like <laughs> it, was, it was him and his brother right. rapping and stuff. So like, I've known mm-hmm. those, I've known them since they were kids. Right. So the perception is that is that first, and it's like no, like when I was pregnant, when me and O were in a relationship, you know, and I was pregnant with my children, none of those guys were around during my whole four and a half years of my relationship with O. Prior, so you knew Omarion before you knew... I never even knew the the, the boys. They were right. never around. I had never met them, right. ever. They right. were never around. He never spoke of them in any capacity. They were never around. And the only person that I knew of was Drew once we got on to Love & Hip Hop the first season. Right. And that's when I met him. But the only time they were ever around each other was for the filming purposes. Outside right. of that, there was no friendship. So... Right. You know, 
again, that was 2016 that me and Omari broke up, May of 2016, right? Right. I go through a whole transformation period up into 2017, not dealing with O, just only for the purposes of our kids. Right. And up into the end of 2017, reconnecting with Drew because right. I was having my wine at the time, doing my <laughs> wine even. So he was like, yo, let me get some of the wine. Right, I'm right, thinking, right, oh, right. shoot. Yeah, yeah. This is this is crazy because I'm thinking these two are friends like that in my right. mind too. Right. And then he's like, no, we not, we ain't never been cool. So when we sat down and we had a conversation and I'm like, you know, letting him try some of my wine, he's kind of telling me certain things and I'm talking to him and I'm finding out certain things that O has lied to me about, just like putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Right. Right. So that was to, end of 2017 going into 2018. Right. Mind you, at that time. I'm dating other people. Okay. There is no. So you and O aren't together. Me and together. O aren't together, and me and Drew don't like each other at that point. Right, right. It's just, he just kind of came back into my life as a friend and kind of, you know. With and my you guys friend. met on Love & Hip Hop. We met through Love & Hip Hop, right, 100%, right. yes. And so you're talking about now I'm proceeding into 2018. I'm dating certain people, right. you know, um, living my best life, just as being single, focusing right. on my kids, focusing on my businesses, my wine and all that, giving back to the community mm -hmm. with my wine, empowering right. women through that. And it, we recently, it's not until 2019, okay. this season, right. where me and Drew are actually now involved. Right. So you're talking about almost... Again, 2020, May of 2020 would be four years that I haven't been with O. Right. So there's no malicious intent. Understood. No one, no one was liking each other while I was in a relationship with O. Like, I loved him. Yeah. I thought that he was going to be the person that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, that was a real thing for me. Understood. But at the same time, when you're talking about a person who you do build a friendship with, who, who is there for you when you're going through some shit with the father of your children mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, just kind of going through the motions of trying to get back to myself, going through postpartum and him, him being like a real shoulder to cry on and lean on when I didn't have no family here in L.A. I'm by myself with two kids. Right. You know, and I don't get the help from, oh, let's be honest, that I should. Right. As far as just support. Right. So can so can I ask some difficult questions? Sure. Just, just mm -hmm. a, again, having a bird's eye view from mm -hmm. the outside looking in. Um, knowing your situation yeah. and knowing like living your life in front of these cameras and, mm -hmm. and that can't be easy, but first and foremost, like as a mother, like, do you think about even from the storylines on love and hip hop to even how you present yourself and certain things they say, like, cause I know I think about this with my kids, like, yo, eventually <clears throat> my kids are going to grow up and see this and right. hear this and have questions. Mm -hmm. Like what are going to, when, when they ask even about, you know, about dad and even the certain things like even what you said because I, I know O to be a, a good guy mm -hmm. and, and have a good heart and I'm pretty sure that you still want you know your children to think positively of their father right so when these type of things come out and you hear certain things what do you do you think about your kids and, and what they may think about if even if not today but in the near future 100% I always think about my children but I also feel like this like I'm a human being I'm mm -hmm. gonna make mistakes you know, it's called life. And the so, only thing that I can do is be honest with my children. The right. only thing that I can do is be my full self and be as free as I can be, which is... Because nobody's you know, perfect. Right. right. I, all I can do is be me. And if right. my kids come with something they ask, I have enough to show them through the process of where I'm at now that they'll be able to understand what decisions and choices, you know, that their mother made. Right. And, and, I, and I do believe that. But I don't slander. I don't, you know, talk about... Omari in front of my kids in that capacity. I try right. to keep it where it's very much so about co-parenting. Right. But on his end, that's what I'm saying, to the perception of the world, Omari's unbothered, and it's like, but he yeah. bothers me. You know what I'm right. saying? And it's like, there's well, a saying, lot I that mean, I'm he dealing do, with. I mean, it's play because we see the, the memes and everything. But there's a lot quiet. that I'm dealing with right. behind closed doors. You right. know what I'm saying? That people don't know. Like, not receiving support and a person claiming they only make a certain amount of money and I'm only getting seven hundred dollars a month. Like right. little stuff like that. And this is this it's just the truth. Right. So what are you gonna tell your kids that right. you didn't help their mom? Like you get what I'm I can say the same thing. What are you gonna tell your children when they find out what you did right. to their mom and how you made their mom feel and, and she protected you for how long? Right. You get what I'm saying? At some point it's like, what we gonna do? So in that sense, because obviously, you know, we only know what we know as right. the public and, right. and you get to, to speak your truth. But even when you say the thing like you just said, you was like, I've made my mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, what would you consider some of those mistakes to be at this point? Well, I just mean just like, you know, 
as far as it just in my even in my relationship with oh I know there's certain things that I could have done you know better and even leading outside of that to have made him a little more comfortable and vice versa you know what I'm saying but when you just are at war with one another it just doesn't seem to go right you just at war and so I just feel like there's meaning just in that I've made mistakes in that and you know outside of that um Let me really think. What mistakes have I actually made? I mean, like, just certain things that I probably have said on the Internet that I could have withheld. That's what I'm saying. Like, the the one that's the the, the elephant in the room where I feel like even where we might even got connected because we reported on it in the morning. I tried to... Hey, I'll be trying to be Switzerland like a motherfucker because <laughs> like, I, I got my own shit. So, I yeah. so, but when I hear, like, you know, our, it was your voice in, in the, the video. The best I've ever had, that one? Yeah. The, okay. About saying, you know, which is cool. But like, I can break hey, that down. So, yeah. can I explain that? Yeah. So, that lie, first and foremost, let me tell you one thing. Let's just start here. I'm very intelligent. I have a degree in radiation science. When I go on my lives. Radiation science? 100%. So, God when damn. I go on my lives, I want people to understand this. I'm very smart. I know what I'm doing. You, you don't be a little lit. People think... No, people, I just have high energy. People think I'm silly, but I think they silly. So I like fucking around with people. Yeah. Like I bother people. I was like, oh, she might be so, drinking some of her wine. No, no, no. <laughs> so when I went on, let me tell you. So when I went on this live, particularly this day, and I'm sitting in my bed, and I'm like, oh, and I'm doing funny shit. Like I'm being sarcastic. Where I'm like, oh, you mad? You, you know, I'm doing stuff right. like that. And then I say, he's the best that I've ever had. Let me just break this down. So, a man can have sex with five women, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And all five women can have good pussy, right? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And. A man can mess with this girl over here who has also good pussy, yes? Right. Okay. But he could have a connection, a soul tie, yeah. a friendship, and Be all on those the same things. Frequency, that, right. And so y'all then he so bond then, a little better. Right, exactly. Yeah. So then he will choose this one over the five that have the good pussy, right. right? But it doesn't negate the fact that they still got good pussy. Right. Right. So you're not saying So that I'm this, not saying right. I'm not negating Omari. Right. All I'm saying is he's the best that I've ever had as far as he's because, patient with me. Right. He we have a a, a, a connection as And far you want to tell the world that that's what it is. Right. But people just automatically think it's the dick. And right. yes, the dick is good. Okay, so what? And I should be proud of saying any person that I'm dealing with penis I, is great. You absolutely right. But you're not as comparing you, dicks. But no, and I would Get out of it. No. That's they're right. Just, no, cause that's because what, I'm not negating That's how it was like, put out there. I would have had kids if it was some some uh, garbage penis. You know right. what I'm saying? So I'm not negating well, O's. I'm just saying. There's a lot of saying, kids out there that were born off a of garbage well, I'm penis. I'm just saying. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't try to shit on O's penis. I would never do that. You so know let's what I'm make saying? that clear. That's a good thing. I'm not shitting on O's PP. I'm just right. saying. You know, it could be five men that got good dick too over here. And so I what, chose so the one that dig- I felt like I had the best overall experience. We digging with. it because as a, an experienced woman, okay. On the average in your <laughs> in your sexual relations, yes. how often do you get good dick? How often? Well, like I'm, I mean, not not I'm saying in your experience, like is it normal? Like uh, you saying, is it is it like most dudes got trash dick and then so well, the ones that know, are good I you gotta let them know i think that i done had a lot of a lot of dick in my well, life i mean there was a couple lives fine. where you was you was letting people no, no. know see that live when i was tapping on my coochie that yeah, time yeah that time i had was... a pad on and people tmi <laughs> but people were like oh your coochie look big and so i'm like oh it's just a pad like right. playing around people and then people are like associating me with the game associating right. me with wiz khalifa associating me with all these men i can't if i stood by you outside i'm fucking you nick that's what they and would so say, they would be like oh you're fucking nick and i have to be like okay you know because i play that with is people. not you, true for okay, the record okay guys <laughs> let's you put know, that so, out there now. right he's not this is my home girl right he's not but when <laughs> even I'm though on you my, and fizz was but we but, really no, friends it's but so when i'm plutonic. on my live <laughs> so when i'm on my live and i'm literally that on that particular live when i'm like oh yeah okay mm-hmm, i'm being so so mm-hmm, i screw him mm-hmm, so you're not I being did, serious when you say that oh man but you know how the media is but it don't, I don't it. Ca- but, the, but i don't live my life for media but again you gotta think about the kids but guess what my that. kids is gonna know their mama so at the end of the day like mama was mom, just playing at the end of the day my kids gonna know me okay. my kids are gonna learn about sex they're gonna learn how to be open they're gonna learn how to do all to how to be themselves and okay. that's all i can say i'm not living we live in a world that is so society driven on instagram and social media Facts. that it almost makes you feel like you can't fucking be you right fuck instagram <laughs> fuck social media Tell fuck em. All that shit. I'm going to be April. Regardless, y'all ain't got to like should. me. You can think a perception. But one thing I'm going to be for sure is myself. And I don't know how else to be. Okay. You understand? I don't know how else to be. Right. So when you're saying my kids, yeah, I'm going to fuck with y'all. You fuck with me, I'm going to fuck with y'all. Because I think it's comical. I think that y'all really are bothered off of the fact that I'm just being my total self. So going back to what we were saying, yeah. you are not some 
openly like whore whore sexually no i do love sex though i do but i'm not hopping on every dick you know what i'm saying but if i am the type of girl where if i see you and i say well damn i do want you i'm gonna get you that's how i do feel but i'm not like come here come here come here give it to you yeah like no so so going back so back to so when we was talking good dick and and you saying drew aka fizz is (laughs) is the best you've ever had at this point yes and now how do you like Based off of the gauge, like you saying, you not you haven't had a whole lot. No. So, so that experience, because uh-huh. I'm just I'm just trying to get to it. I, is is it a lot of trash dick out there? So you felt oh, like you needed some... to tell the world that this was the best. No, or but like... I mean uh, the reason why I, f- I said that was because of everything that's transpiring right mm. now. Because everybody's like, oh my god, and the perception, and it's like she's a whore. You home wrecker, and I'm like, but what home did I wreck? I, yeah. So maybe this is the first time you. Maybe if you put it like, yo, I feel like I'm experienced a more passionate connection and a more right, loving but connection but that's how i broke it down that's what i'm saying like it right. doesn't negate oh but it's saying that my overall experience with this person literally is the best experience that i've had with a person with a man you right. know what i'm saying and right that's all i me- meant by that so and now but it don't matter what i yeah, said but, nick you know they're gonna take your but, words but i'm giving you i'm glad you, you said cleared. what you didn't say and i just gotta say okay but i'm glad you cleared <laughs> that up because that if you would have put it that way it seems like oh that's at least she's tapping into something that a lot of other people can relate to because we can't uh, we can't say that there's anyone out here who's never experienced dating someone that knows right. their ex and we've right. even talked about it like and, and a lot of people are like look mm-hmm. we all been to high school we all been to college we've been in those situations where you know the person you dating in the ninth grade is dating your best friend in the twelfth grade <laughs> and like so in this situation yeah. it seems like where people have the biggest issue is the fact that Omarion. And Fizz not only grew up together, okay. they worked together. Mm-hmm. It appeared to the public that they are and were friends. They still got to work together. They We mm-hmm. still have recently seen B2K shows. Mm-hmm. And going through everybody's mind is like, yo, how is this dude <clears throat> dating your baby mama? Like, that's just. It's called life. And if they're not friends, they're not <laughs> friends. So it's like. I'm supposed to. But they're to, co-workers. They got to work together. Right, as you should. Um, and if one man's trash is another man's treasure, then so be it. If you didn't care about leaving your family and y'all not friends, why do we have to sit here and be like, okay, let's consider your feelings? We don't have to because they aren't friends. <clears throat> so have you seen them talk to each other? Have they had no, the conversation? No, they have never. They've never had the conversation. Oh, Should they? I mean, I don't know. Should they? I mean, oh, for what though? If my I'm, if is, I'm you, I think yeah. For what? But what is that gonna do? Okay, you are with my mother and my <clears throat> kids, and so you. I mean, he okay, did. I'll put you this way. Okay, I put myself in a situation. Okay, I have, I have children. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, and, because of the kids. You, right, we would I say. would say like, and even like, um, my ex is dating someone when they when they date. I at least want to know who's around my children. And mm-hmm. and how they're behaving and what they're doing around my, t- I I gotta have a conversation with right. you just especially because I got a daughter, so I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, I can't just have any man, I don't care who he is, around my unless I, I gotta talk to you. Right. Ain't gonna be no piggyback rides, right. like even like ain't gonna be no <laughs> like I just don't like men touching and being around mm-hmm. my daughter because I know what that is. Even as someone who's influenced by things at eight years old i need to know what's going on even when i'm not around Mm -hmm. so i have to have those conversations so when i see that situation i'm like all right i know and i know both like but oh won't talk he won't even talk to me like you know we don't even speak he won't speak to anybody like he keeps it he plays it close to his vest like no it ain't playing it close to his i'm telling you you i think that and we've y'all been we've been at we've been at know. oh I've, this is one thing i've we've been in whether it's birthday parties mm-hmm. or and he or, put that smile on i know that smile so that's not so that's not real no like, oh, like the nicest dude in the world oh, i know but that's what you you get you're you're getting the on the surface oh you're getting the perception of oh when he's out you don't you know, you might sit in cock cock key for a little bit, but you're not hanging out with this man every day. You don't see the yeah, life he's living. You don't know. So what I'm studio, saying is, is for a person who was fucking him, <laughs> a person who had two kids with him. Right. You got he gotta be who, You had two kids with the guy. Hello, a person who sacrificed and, and built you know what we built together up until now and still dealing with him and being right. served corp I mean, it's a lot going on. Of course, and trust me, I've you been know, there before and I, mean, I and as someone who's been on the other side of it. It's it's a, a, you can get past it. 
You can get past it for yeah, the kids. Yeah, 100%. But you can't necessarily change somebody. So I can do my best. Right. I can do my part. But I can't force O to be something that I want him to be. He right. has to do that on his own. And he will. And you guys are going to grow and, and, right. and evolve as people. And you're going to have graduations and right. birthday so, parties so, and marriages. Of, 100%. Like, and I can that, do that. That's, that's not going to But getting stop. back to the conversation about why him and Drew haven't talked is because he won't. He won't. But then he treats me like. But you don't think I that might. Like for, Fizz might. And then when we say Fizz and Drew, as y'all know, that's the same person. Yeah, Fizz and Drew. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't think he might, you know, like, at least be like, yo, oh, my man. Like, he, just, but what I'm saying is, is that he has definitely tried like to. Like, in the make... middle of the dance movie, like, hey, my <laughs> nigga, like, I might. Nah, like, he like, definitely like, has. Y'all got to <laughs> rehearse. Like, I got to want to say something like, is it cool if I like, like. No. <laughs> I'm just no. saying. He definitely has tried to communicate, but oh, oh. I'm telling you, oh, didn't even want to ride on the bus with nobody. He Understood tried me? to be the star. Okay, like, well, not... I mean, and let him be that. But, <laughs> but you know, he has been that where right. he doesn't like he's all of his friends that have been around him from his manager. You know, Taz. Yeah. You know, a little see all these Absolutely. people. No one's over there. So it got you have to just kind of just look at it for once and say, well, why is no one over here that used to be over here and everybody is over here? But that's like you really, it happens. But it's not how it happens. It has a lot to do with self at this point. Right. It does. It has a lot to do with self. Understood. And I just feel like, you know, I feel like O can get to a place where he is a bit more... Uh, Introverted. Keeps no, no, where, he can, where he'll get to a place where he is not so bitter. Right. You know, he left me, but he seemed like he was really mad that I kind of just flourished outside of that relationship, which is fine. OK, cool. I'm not mad. Right. I'm not the one serving papers. I'm not the one, you know, making it hard on him. I try to be cool. So I feel like he'll get to a so point. So you tried to do the co-parenting thing and didn't want the drama or any of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, ha I you know, I printed out even little excerpts because I just really wanted you to see. So you knew. Can yeah. I just show you one yeah, thing? Yeah, I, I really mean, need to see this. I'm, I'm with it. I'm tired of people trying to tell me that I just, you know, because, so, you know, just can you just read I'm this one? Just read this one little thing so you know that it wasn't. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fight for you, my brother, but this is, she I'm got just, paperwork. I'm just saying. <laughs> just read this little line. Just, this this just one? Was, yeah. This is, that's, that's him. Yeah. Okay, he says, I'm sorry for the pain I've caused you. I hope one day you can forgive right, me. Right, because That's there's nice. a, it is nice. But what I'm saying is, is you're never going to catch me sending this to him because I never did anything to him. And the reason what I'm saying is, is this is when we were not together and he sent this to me. Right. He has put me through a lot of shit. I could imagine. That's and what so, men do. We do that, especially to our baby right, mamas. Right. So what I'm saying is. I apologize to my baby mamas daily. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll say it again. I'm sorry. Look, I, I fucked and that's up. fine and all, but like I said, you're not going to catch me writing him any of this. And still, again, going oh, into my character, right. no matter, you're an amazing person, April, no, no matter how mad you are at me. like. But that's, my, you know, I, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Because vouching for your character Thank right you. now. Because when I, Thank you. when that's I, I, when I do, <laughs> you are an amazing person. So sometimes when I see and hear this stuff, I'm like, right. April is solid. April's cool. Like, she's good people. She's intelligent. Mm -hmm. She Thank carries you. herself well. So when I see, well, and I'm like, all right, maybe that's just the loving. Like, honestly, when mm -hmm. I see this, I'm like, this is all for TV. But this Because I know before. all of y'all, and I'm like, this ain't crazy. Like, but this was even before where they were associating me. Oh, sorry. Thank mm -hmm. you. This was even before they were associating, before we were on the show, me and Drew together, and I was getting slack. You know yeah, what I'm that, saying? That's just what y'all was friends. But just because of the perception of the group. Because of the group. So I understand that. I get it. I knew what was going to come with that. But I'm also not going to sit here and be like, okay, April, like, are you going to care about what the world thinks about your relationship when this person, when I know the real details behind it, right? Right. So I had to really sit with myself, Nick, and be like, okay, April, like, this is a good person. This is a good man who was really there for you. And it wasn't my intention to fall for, for this person at right. all by any means. But there's it's so just, many other people. There are so many other Could've people. Could have fell for but, somebody in pretty right. right here. No, no, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, but but those men weren't there for me in the capacity that he was there for me. Right. So, un, you know, unfortunately. Okay. But fortunately, this is how God panned it out to be for me. Okay, so can I, get, can I go a little deeper sure. just for a second? And mm -hmm. you're a very intelligent woman, so mm -hmm. I just want to know your, your thought process okay. on this. Okay. Is there any way mm -hmm. that the media, maybe producers on the show, mm -hmm. maybe even even we just say the energies in the universe mm -hmm. may have manipulated you into saying like, yo, this might be a good look or this might be no. something. Because I'm thinking like, I'm no. like somebody, there's no way mm -hmm. that like, 
because I've, I've seen it. I've seen producers on reality no, shows and I, and I know, like put yeah. two people together and be like, no, no y'all, no, this people, was two not people that. that don't get along or fight. Mm-hmm. Two people that might have beef with this person mm-hmm. get to talk shit about this person. Mm-hmm. Why do you think out of all the men in the world mm-hmm. that someone who was in a group or currently still is in a group with the father of your children is the next person that we see publicly that you are in love with? Um, it just happened that way. I mean, like I said, I was like, dating really, other... does the universe really work It, like it that? really did happen. And, and, and my publicist and all of them are here, my manager, and they've been a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was dating other guys, Nick, like, in dating. And yeah. it just didn't pan out that way. It just didn't. And then you have someone like Drew who's chill and, you know, he's patient and he's just, he's, my kids love him. You know, our kids love each other. And it just happened. I, I didn't even like the dude initially. I yeah. was not, he was not you don't my like type. like light-skinned dudes like He that. was not my type. <laughs> and then it was like, oh my God, like, this man really does you know, so much for me. Like, he helped me bounce back from right. just my postpartum and things that, like, just su- my support system. So I kind of Which started having dope. a love for him in that capacity. I understand. And it just, uh, it just happened that way. I like I said, I'm probably I'm probably more of an advocate and probably mm-hmm. someone that's more understanding of your situation yeah. than most mm-hmm. because I've I've been in similar situations. Right. Not that one exactly, but I've, obviously, I've been in many public relationships right. and people can analyze them for whatever reason. Like, yo, ain't you friends with that person? <laughs> right. and that, like, Obviously, yeah. y'all all, all know, so I get it. Yeah. But the only thing I would say, mm-hmm. and as someone who is is a, a a friend and associate, and someone who's in a similar situation mm-hmm. as you, I would say sometimes when you feed the fire, mm-hmm. again as a parent, as someone, it, it kind of, and again, we don't care about what people say. We definitely don't mm-hmm. get. But I'm I'm thinking more about like protecting your character. You're, you, I always be like, yo, they smarter than that. That's yeah, what I but often say. Ca- like, but, but that's what I'm trying like, to say. Like, it, none of I don't this understand was TV. that play. No, none of this was TV. None of it was this. And I'm and not like even I... talking about the situation. The situation no, is no, what no, it is. Yeah. But like, even some of the statements and the and the lies and the in the. I mean, like I said, I'm gonna be me. I'm always gonna be April, and right. I'm not gonna sit here and be thinking to myself, okay, well, if I say this, because it doesn't matter what I say. Right. It doesn't matter what you say when you have a spectacle on your life, and when people are watching you, and you just happen to be a person that people are interested in, and right. then you got these hateful admirers, because that's what you really are. Yeah, yeah. They're, you say they're, you hate they're me, fans. They're you, fans. Right? At the end of the day, it don't matter what you say. It don't matter what but, you do. So all I'm saying is, I'm a human. I'm gonna live my life. Cause there's a storyline. <laughs> we see the storyline, and right now, right. you you almost the picture they painting you as the Jezebel. The that's the, fine. The, I'll be and, that. And rightly so, and I don't say rightly slow. So, but for whatever reason, Omarion is looking like the one that's unbothered. Right. He's looking like the the protagonist to mm-hmm. your antagonist, mm-hmm. and everybody is siding with him and more. That's fine. And they making you and Fizz look like, yo, and, y'all, and y'all trifling. Let me tell you this. I don't care who sides with who. That's that's not any of my concern, because at the end of the day, I'm here. Everybody's here. So do you get to, pl- do, in the storyline, on the show at uh-huh. least, do you get to say, look, I want to at least, like, because I feel like they, they digging. I want at least what, though? At what least you- get to be the April that you're being right now. Um, and that, to, well, uh, I tried, but my whole thing was is when I was on the show, for me, I didn't want to make my storyline about O at all. Right. Because, again, I in my mind, I'm like, well, he's still the, be- what I'm saying, he's still the father to my children. So I did walk into it with a mindset like that. I right. didn't want to have to talk to, talk about him. So the only thing that I was willing to say so was. So you didn't want to say anything negative I didn't. about so the only thing, Right. So the only thing that I was willing to say at that time was. He left his family, and that was it. Because that was the segue of from being on First Love and Hip Hop till now. Right. That was the truth. That's right. how we ended up not being together. But even that narrative, but, I don't like that narrative. He left his family. Like, well, he did. He. I can't tell you. I can't give you a reason why he left. So for me, that's what my truth. He right. left. And it has, and you don't like. You, again, that's y'all personal business. Right. But it wasn't like. I mean, because y'all still family at the end of the day. I mean, yeah, but it doesn't. It ain't like it he's just some deadbeat fact. dad that ain't no, or never I mean, gonna see his kids again. No, he all. gonna see his kids, and I would never allow him not to see his kids. Right. I'd be the mama that'd be like, "Come get your kids." Right. So it ain't he didn't leave his family, but he, he, but he made a choice to when I'm leave saying the that, household. He left. The, y'all don't live in the same house. No, I left the household. So you left the house. I left the household because he said he needed a break. And so for a whole month, he wasn't telling me why he needed a break. So it was really weird, but I was still trying to support him. Right. And so I stayed in the house with him while I had a newborn baby and my son, who was a year and a half at the time. And I was trying to figure out, like, well, what? How can I support you? He wouldn't tell me anything. At that point, I said to myself, well, if my daughter was ever in a situation like this, what would I tell my daughter? 
you know, with a man who ain't supporting you, you're not you're not doing anything. You're not giving me anything. So right. at, at this point, what would I tell her? Get the fuck up out of there. You're unhappy. You're in postpartum. This man isn't supporting you. Right. He has turned his whole family against you. I mean, there's so much that I can go into. So I said, gotta go. Okay. So I moved out with my kids. Right. And I was a single mom because I was, and he would see them once, maybe, or twice a week. And at that point- That's it, pretty damn good. Though. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but but it's not good when a woman is in postpartum. And it's not good right. when I don't have any family. And it's not good when I'm going back to work, working in radiation science after I was just on a TV show working 16 hours a damn day. Understood. It's, that's not good. And I'm breastfeeding. And I'm sleep deprived. Not just I needed that, more I'm, support. All I'm saying is like there's a lot of other fathers who wouldn't even- do but, that but, but in, let's a, in, in a breakup situation. Let's talk about and if, if you're an adult and you have and you have children, regardless of how whatever anyone else does, we have a choice when you have kids to raise them right or to not raise them at all. Raise them right. So, but okay, because we're not. Because all I'm saying, like, we ain't gonna I, start. I had to push him out. You came inside. We ain't of me. gonna start. We? <laughs> we ain't gonna start throwing, and throwing stones right, in can these I get glass right houses. What I'm getting so I can raise them right. So I, I'm not gonna judge you or O. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I don't, please don't. You don't got. We ain't got to judge. We ain't you know? gonna judge. I, I still no want one. you to love them. You know, right. I'm and, always and gonna I have do. love for the dude too. Cool. All I'm saying is, mm -hmm. you guys have children. One hundred percent. Yes. And you're gonna have to go to graduation. We do, and I can see him you're and gonna... be like, "Hey, how you doing?" But he... so when you guys see each other now, how is it? He me. He's mean to me. He just kind of look at me. <laughs> but so, I feel like he gonna get. He he's gonna get through that. You know you what I'm all, saying? You both are gonna get through it. I'm I'm through it. I'm in a peaceful state of my life. So uh, then you and you and Fizz is it? I mean, I don't want to mess up no mm -hmm. storylines and that. But no, we ain't messing up y'all. Yeah, y'all still good. Or? Yeah, no, we good. Y'all are y'all. Like, would you consider yourself we are a couple? A yes, couple? we are. We are good. He's my best friend. If it works and continues to work, he knew that you way, was coming up here to talk to me. No, he did it. I didn't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I was doing an interview, but I didn't tell him no. All right. Mm -hmm. So and and then because I even seen him online, like <laughs> when because other because obviously everybody's commenting on it. Joe Budden yeah. commenting on it. Every, yeah, everybody right. and, and Fizz is clapping back. He he talking his talk. Mister Pump it up. That's yeah. So, Mister Whoop. Yeah, so that, I'm yeah. saying like how when y'all talk like what is the conversation like? Is he like is it are y'all some Bonnie and Clyde shit like we just he's fuck been, the world? It's me and you against the world, and we gonna anybody who got a problem with it? They not gonna stop our love. Like I is mean, that what it's it is? just more so like because I've been there before. I like that. That's, it's, just, it's just more so like we don't care. Right. We don't care because we know what we both are dealing with. And is this is this some some forever? We don't care. Like I'm riding um, this, with you. To me, I don't look at I look at life as this is this is where I'm currently right now. I know right. that life is ever changing. I know that, hell, we could make it work for a lifetime or things can happen where motherfuckers change and we don't grow together and we may not work. Right. So I don't know. I only can tell you that right now he my man. We we here and with him. it's the best you ever had. And he's the best that I've ever had as far as the experience, not the equipment people. Okay? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, so, and you, you're having a, a great experience. Yeah, my kids are happy. That's all that matters. Right. My kids are happy. Right. Period. And that's a, and that's pretty much what you really just wanted to let everybody know. Like, that's I'm it. happy. My kids are happy. Nobody's being disrespected. No one hurt nobody's feelings. No one's being malicious. And why? No okay, well, so why do you think everybody? Like, why is Omari so unbothered? Well, Omari knows that he can't talk about it publicly because he would have to tell the full truth. And mm. the truth is that he did what he did. Okay, and you keep truth, saying that. Cause, did, and, and I'm gonna, saying I'm gonna stick up for all people, the men out there real quick. And, and what I'm saying is, is that if I if I was the culprit, this is what I mean by it. if I was the culprit of the breakup, I'm gonna take that. I'm right. gonna say, you know what, I did that, and at the end of the day, I'm sorry for that. Right? Just the way he did. Yeah. That's and I, what, I, I put myself in this situation. I've been responsible for right. probably the majority of my breakups. Uh, I either I've stepped out and I've left or okay. uh, whatever. Or if you want to, I've okay. cheated and I don't believe in monogamy. So that in itself. And, I, and see, and I, uh, well, I'm kind of there with you too. So I'm a lot of woman. Like right. what I'm saying, because, you know, when I'm in a relationship with somebody, I need somebody to understand that I'm not that way either. Right. Well, so, which is a whole different side of That's a whole nother conversation. Exactly. So, you know, and it's a lot for some right. men. So in that, to say and that, women. being someone who's responsible, does that mean, is there is there some vindictive energy sometimes? Because I've been on the other side of it to where it's like, I can feel like this person is just upset with me and mm -hmm. our relationship. And I don't want that to affect our, our how, one, how we interact with each mm -hmm. other how we i don't want to be mean and, and yeah i'm not that and just because our relationship didn't work out now we got to be bitter and angry towards each other like 
what is there any resentment in that space? Because you I said feel, you said he's let, mean to you. <clears throat> yeah, I let Omari go. It took me about a year and a half to kind of get through that relationship. Because clearly you was in love with them. I man. was. I was. I mean, it was the hardest breakup of my life. Right. So it took about a year and a half, but I left it where it was at. Okay. I went through that healing. I left it with where it was at. I don't feel no way. I don't want to wish bad on him because he is, at the end of the day, the father to my kids. And I want nothing be. but the best for him. I want him to succeed in life. I want him to find another woman that's going to love him right. and that's going to be great for my children. And I would wish that for him. Right. Unfortunately, I'm just saying, sometimes you know how it is when you get into a new situation or when you're flourishing in your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes men can't handle that. I'm just saying. And so, so you that think happened. he jealous of your, uh, of your on, glow man. up? When I was down and out and I was broken, where where was you? Where, hello? It's like a Tyler Perry movie. Okay. Because now that I'm <laughs> See, where I don't, I'm, I'm at. I'm the woman that I am and no, I'm, I'm a date saying, who I want to date. Now that where I'm at, it just feels like he's the one that continuously is doing stuff. We don't have to be in court. That's a choice. Mm. I didn't serve I, papers. I got served on Mother's Day. That's a choice. Ooh, That's what that, I'm saying. Definitely Tyler Perry movie. That's what I'm saying. So I, mm. We don't have to. IRS coming at me because he said I, he 1099 me saying I work for his company. It's little things like that. What? Why? Why? It don't have to be that. It don't so, have to be that. You, so you saying he's the one probably being more vindictive behind this? He is, the but scene. that's what I'm trying to say. I don't want no smoke. If he sees this interview, I don't want no smoke. I don't know how else to communicate with the father of my kids because I really don't know how. Mm. I don't okay. want no smoke. I don't wish you bad or nothing. Co-parenting, cool. You can have it. Because, I mean, the Omari, I know he's I'm the nicest dude I don't care world. about no nice. That's what I thought, too. And he nice. I'm not taking away from his niceness. He's a, but he definitely a Scorpio. That <laughs> motherfucker know how to sting a motherfucker. And I, See, you know, I, I, April, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I hear some hurt in your I, voice. No, I'm, no, no, no. I'm just literally saying that, like, yeah, when you talk about it, it brings up those, those feelings. 100%. I'm passionate about that. Yeah. I'm passionate about that. Because I don't want to have to deal. Right. He still has... He still has rain in my life because we have kids. And, so it's still, right. it's still, of course I'm going to feel away. Right. Of course. When the person who I had kids with, I can't even get along with. You damn right. Yeah. That's going to bother me. Yeah. As it should in any woman who's in a relationship with someone they feel like they can't co-parent with for the sake of their children. Because all I want is what's best for my kids. Okay. That's it. I think that's the common ground that we can all, all get All I to. want what is best for my children. And I want them to love their dad. I want their, them to, you know, have the best relationship with their father. So is but your I, current relationship the best thing for your children? No, but, but you know... I've tried to do therapy, you know, I've tried to go outside of him, even with his aunts. Right. Where I have messages with his aunts where it's like, we're trying, he's just really hard headed. Like we've tried. Right. So then it's not just a me and oh. It's right. a it's a it's a group of people trying. So then when and we again just talking about the kids and then mm -hmm. we we enter Drew in the situation who you say has a great relationship with your mm -hmm. kids and it and it's really like your kids like him and everything. Yeah. But in that situation knowing mm -hmm. the whole daddy works with mommy's mm -hmm. new boyfriend mm -hmm. at because i because your kids are still like how old are five, they? five and my daughter will be four march 7th do they do they ask questions yet or do or is it no i mean my son is pretty my son and my daughter are pretty smart. very smart you know they see like the plaques and they say oh you know uh that's pierre because they call drew his middle name yeah, yeah, yeah so like oh that's pierre you know and that's my dad or whatever but they've never seen them together, together. so to, th to them it's normal because it's like you know my son tells me all the time mom you know he'll sit in front of me and drew and be like mom i really do like you together you guys you guys um he makes you happier he'll say little things like that and we'll look and be like wow right you know but megan and i may ain't never seen drew right. and oh like this so it's not something that feels like oh uncle or because they're not friends but eventually they will see them together who knows they're not doing the group stuff anymore they had right. they had their one little tour they made their bag and you know life goes on so this is because again i don't watch the show mm -hmm. like that and it sounds like i probably should but like is is <laughs> is there is there um because i know they do the reunion shows and yeah. stuff like that yeah we did it already and so that but it hasn't aired yet no and I'm pretty, like, because I keep seeing, like, it, it seemed yeah. like oh, yeah. it, it got popping. Oh. <laughs> when did you guys do that? Uh, we did it, uh, I believe, like, October 15th. That was in Atlanta, right? It or, was in Atlanta. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so, and that, it airs when? Uh, probably the end of November, maybe, I feel maybe, like I'm promoting. <laughs> but, Promote me! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and is, when that type of stuff happened, because that, yeah. clearly, they were there, and I'm pretty sure they brought it all up. Yeah. And it was said, well, did it get heated? Because it sounds like it was a lot of information that was brought up, and I keep seeing 
stuff. What, what you what you saying, Nick? What I'm just saying. Like, I just want to know what Nick, should, what what should we anticipate that comes Look, out of that? You know, it was it was a lot that was said. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, everybody want to talk about my vagina. I think that that was like one of the segments. April, you screw this person. April, you screw. I said, oh my goodness, my vagina is really just up out here. You right. Know, I, goodness, I wish I did did do it at this point. Right. Um. So that was a segment. But then you know, some information came out. You know about. You know, some folks and stuff that I really I just think that you guys should just genuinely just, just, watch, just it watch it because, you know, well, let's I mean, let, let's let's keep it here for a second, because yeah. it's interesting because you're on television, you're, okay. you're, you're doing interviews. We see you on social media. Yeah. Your family. Yeah. When they what do they say to you? What do what do, they're like? Yo, my mama phone ringing like what what do they what do they have? Like to my mom and them? Yeah. Just about everything. Yeah. Mom, well, they know the truth. So my mom is like. You know, she feels a way about oh, and what right. what she saw me go through, and so it's very it's a sensitive subject. That's for what I'm her. saying. When, I, again, um, I understand that uh, and, when yeah. you see when so, a, a mother yeah. of two probably mm-hmm. not getting the support that she would like, mm-hmm. probably uh, financially as mm-hmm. well as spiritually, physically, all mm-hmm. that stuff. You know, any father should definitely be there you know for the mother of their child as much as they possibly can be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just as myself, and right. I felt like I've probably you know falling short of, of that many times and I, I i stay up or if you're not going to be there for yeah. me in that capacity you know because he's there, you know, for way. his kids stop taking the money out of my pocket that's feeding my kids that's all i'm saying because right. all this court i gotta come out of my pocket for all this saying i work for your company and t- an irs is coming at me that i owe money that's the money you ain't giving me money to begin with but right. now you're taking the money out of my pocket that i'm taking care of my kids with. so a lot of the pain so, a lot of the pain is financial is what you're saying a lot of it yeah because it's like i gotta take care of my babies i'm right. i'm a single woman you know a single mother i meant a uh, single mother i mean in the state of california taking care of my babies right two kids right so that's let's, scary that's scary as fuck so let's segue there for a second because i do want to talk about you as an entrepreneur yeah. and as a businesswoman mm-hmm. and how you plan on providing for your kids outside of being you know somebody's baby mama mm-hmm. you have a company you have you have april a, wine yeah 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 tell me how that came about in you know where you want to see that go? Well, it came about around the time of my breakup. And, um, you know, I ended up branding with somebody in Temecula and creating like four varietals of wine. I ended up naming it after my daughter, which is, her name is Ame. And it means beautiful. And I called it Ame La Vie, which means beautiful life. Right. And at that time I was like, okay, well, shit, I got a product. Well, how can I sell it? I just don't want to put it out and just be like, go buy my wine, people. Like I wanted it to mean something to me. So I was right. like, all right. How can I break, you know, at this point, let me break bread with other women mm-hmm. that, who felt like their power was kind of taken from them the way that I felt. Right. So let me give back. Even when I was having postpartum, when I was sick and just it was the worst time of my life, I still was doing these intimate events and giving their these women their power back. Right. But it was in a form of them giving me my power back because it was therapy. Right. So it was like... That's how I was able to sell my wine. Right. Was doing these events. Which is smart as shit. Right, doing women like, empowerment events. Women over wine. I don't see my mama right. and her friends with breaking the wine bread like, with, with like, young women. You like, know, like, that's, empowering. That's very. That's so dope. Like, right. I would encourage you to continue doing that. Like, and I the, am. like the wine mixers and stuff yeah, like that 100%. amongst women. Talking that talk, like, yeah. Even you know that, and it that, was good because we cried together, yeah. You know, over some wine. Period. See, you know, that's what I'm saying. Next time you get on your live, just make sure you got your bottle with you but right listen, there. But like, listen, that's Nick, a, back then, get that money. No, no, listen. <laughs> back then, when I was doing these events and I was doing my lives, where was y'all at? <laughs> they ate it, but they there now. You got them now. <laughs> I'm just so saying. Now, I'm, I'm, you can you can be. Where's the wine? You should have the wine right here. Oh, see, you, I you know. Can, you could be True. selling the wine. I'm trying to get you the True. business game. <laughs> Aprilwines.com. <laughs> like, so at this point, next time you go live, make sure you got you some wine True. with you. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? See, then when I have my wine, y'all gonna say I'm a drunk buzzer. See, Jezebel. Then I'm drunk. But so, at you least, know, you, I but at least you get to your bag. I'm I'm all for the wine. No, that's true. Yeah. But uh, in all seriousness, I definitely wanted to give you the platform and the opportunity to say what you Thank say you. And, and again like I said I'm probably somebody that's probably more sympathetic and empathetic Thank to this you. process so I, I I know you're a good person Thank you. Uh, I, I know you and O are good parents and, mm-hmm. and that's to me when I see the situation like that's all I want I just mm-hmm, want because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know I, I've been I've been through them tough times mm-hmm. of a breakup Hello. I did them, them tough times of co-parenting and it it's a it's work you know what it I mean? Is. We all know relationships are work, mm-hmm. but knowing when you know you're you're raising kids and you're not in the it's same household and 
It's a At choice. the end of the day, you want to you want your children to always love their parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, being someone who grew up in a single you know mm-hmm. parenthood yeah, uh, parent situation an unorthodox my, my grandmother my mother my father they all you know had to make sacrifices and, and didn't do it perfectly mm-hmm. and but I, don't, I at the end of the day I think the the respect and love was was always there so and I yeah. know I know y'all want that yeah and and, like, I, and I'm, I'm hopeful and I'm pr- you know I'm prayed up about it and I know that one day you know with age comes maturity and I feel like you know We'll get there. Yeah. I am hopeful, but I just feel like this is where we at right now, and it's called life, and And you living it in front oh, of everybody. A, right, and there's a, so many people in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> feather. That's, um, you know, dealing with the same shit. So no, let me facts. Be your I think example. that's why it's so interesting. Okay, let me be an example to you guys, because yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with being a spectacle and, you know, allowing people into my life. and I'm you know, okay seeing, with being a spectacle. I, I can see am. that being the and, headline. And being <laughs> right someone now. that shows people, you know, that you can do it, you can get through it, and come out on the other side. There, hey, and I understand, and like I said, we're having an up-close and personal conversation mm-hmm. with Miss April Jones, and and, and she's mm-hmm. living her truth, and she's talking her talk. Uh, and I appreciate you being so candid and so honest and, and and free. But you know what? You know, this is, this is our show. We can't <laughs> let you go without getting through the firing right. squad. So I'm going to ask some questions just based off of And I, I'm really interested to know how you feel about a lot of these things because we ask everyone the same questions. Uh-oh. And I feel like I, I feel like you go you got this, though. You're an intelligent woman with okay. a degree in... And is it rocket? Ro- nor- rocket? No. Rocket you can't science. Don't say rockets. Rocket ah. sciences with radiation science. Radiate. That's just as wild. That yeah. sounds just as impressive. Thank radiation you. science and rocket science. I'm impressed. Same thing. <laughs> Put it in the same category. It's all all right. So first question off sure. top. You 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 may know uh, something about psychology. There's only two emotions that every other emotion stems from: love and fear. At the end of the day, uh, what would April Jones want to be more loved or feared? loved I don't want to be feared I'm, I'm a good person and I just feel like you know for me you know life is based on love you know you, you right you know everybody True. wants to be loved shoot and coming from having a broken home and being you know in traumatic experiences as a kid all I wanted was that right so I feel like love I don't want to be feared by nobody all right well speaking I don't of fears, be feared by nobody what's your greatest fear my great death Really? Mm-hmm. I'm scared. Because <laughs> I can't imagine not breathing. Not but what if it's more amazing on the other side? It might be, but we do we know for real, for real, and that's where comes faith. But, you right. know, I don't want to get into the conversation. And I do believe in God, but I'm just saying I'm scared. All that's right. my biggest fear. All right. All right. I right. lighten it up a little bit. Okay. Favorite movie? Favorite movie. Ooh. You know, I have a lot. I like, like, 16 Candles and Breakfast oh, you Club. Go all the way back there? Yeah. I was just like too young for those movies. I wasn't though. I'm 1986. But still, like, that's yeah. I I can rock with you. That's, I, what? Like that's those you were like I love baby those, I when love those, those kind of out. yeah. But I'm like old. Right. All right. I'm now those old. are those are those romantic. So you like a hopeless romantic? Yeah, like Pretty Woman and all those. Like those are like my favorite. Pretty and Woman even the way that they were shot. Too, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know. Facts. Facts. Best piece of advice you've ever received. Best piece of advice, you know, just live and be you. Just live and be yourself. Never allow anyone to take away your truth, honestly. Because, you know, I live my life like that. Like, I just live in truth and I just want to be me. So, best piece of advice, live in your truth. Worst piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, I don't know. This is a good one. I got to think about this one. We'll come back. I was about to say, uh, <laughs> date little fizz. <laughs> no, uh, that wasn't my word. That was that could that was my best piece of advice. Honestly, really, was to keep going. And yeah, because I questioned that when I was in the relationship. Like, oh my god, like you knew oh, people, no. what people was gonna say. Yeah, but then it was like, what? Am I gonna hinder myself like that? Like, am I gonna miss out on my biggest blessing because mm. I'm afraid of of what people are gonna say? I'm that not is, doing that to myself. That is some Shakespearean type yeah, love I'm not type go, I'm stuff. I'm not gonna do that to myself, and I'll get the slander. It's cool. You can beat me up, and that's just gonna make y'all love stronger. It don't got nothing to do with what people are gonna make my love. My love gonna be what it's gonna be. But it ain't got nothing to do with outside. It don't. I just I wasn't gonna sell myself short. Right. Hey, I rock with you. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Sitting across from you, it feels genuine. It I feels wasn't gonna real. Sell myself short. And you're not you're not worried about what the rest of the world care. thinks. So I commend that. Because anybody who's walking in they walk and living their truth mm-hmm. and, and not worried about what other people got to say, mm-hmm. I, I salute that all the way. I'm so, happy. Absolutely. Favorite cuss word. Fuck. <laughs> 
because <laughs> you don't give one Damn. <laughs> at that all. Part, I really don't care. Worst job you've ever had? Wendy's. Oh really? My God. Yes. I used to eat all the food, but it was just so. I just came out smelling like burgers. And really? What? What did? Was you on like you was a cook? Yeah. The window drive through. I was the cook. I had to put the fries up and thing, popping grease on my skin. Yeah. You know, I'm trying See, to be I, pretty. I did shit. fast food. The the, <laughs> the kitchen. The kitchen didn't bother me. It's when they made me go clean the bathrooms. Oh. See, I wasn't doing that. Yeah, and no, I, mm-hmm. I, I left. I yeah. was like, I'm good. But I'm Wendy's, good. man. I don't. And I mean, shout out to those that yeah, do yeah. work at, at Wendy's. They know how tough I it is. Because I do still love eating <laughs> my chicken sandwich number six with a Pepsi. Hey, them baked Coca-Cola. potatoes at Wendy's. Salute. Period. I'm, I'm Natural rocking. fries. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, you're on the island. You only can take three things. What you taking? All right. Can I take my kids? <laughs> yeah, That's of two? course. Yeah. You can okay, take so fizz. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. I, I am going to still need the pleasure on yeah, right, the right, right. And then I need my babies in. Right. That's, so you got one more thing you can take. Dang. Oh, okay. Is food on? The food going to be on the island? Okay. Yeah, take, I mean, it's an island. I want you my cell phone. I, I'm, I, I need okay. my cell phone. I do Because I want to be able to call my, my friends. All right. I'm rocking with that. Yeah, I'll be cool with that. Most prized possession. My kids. That's a beautiful thing. Guilty pleasure. Ooh. You done talked about everything. What what is, what is something that you like? What's your guilty pleasure, Nick? Oh, people, I, I got so many, but I'm a candy crackhead. I love candy, and I know, like, even I shouldn't eat it, but, like, something like that. Candy and sex. But sex I was going to say I was about I was to say, gonna... but sex ain't, everybody has it. Like, that's not something, like, I should have sex. My, and, busting a nut. Really? But that's, see, that, uh, see, and do, it don't require, do you get that And often? it don't require a man. How often do you do that? Every day. Really? Is it what it gets you going? Like, I, you see, I got energy. Yeah. Is it a morning thing? Is it like? It's whenever I need it to be. It might be two times a day. Might be one time a day. Is it, might be four times. Is a it day. a? Is it? Do you have a, a helpful device or you yes, just know? Yes, magic you? wand, ladies, go get the magic wand. See, mate, that's the next thing. The, the wine and the magic wand. I'm trying to give you game right here. If you put those together, if you uh, box it you together, happy, then you one happy bitch. If you you should have <laughs> April Jones whatever wine wand and then you, wine, <laughs> the wine Period. wand. I need to create my own. Cause I'm now trying I know to tell, what I I'm like. trying to give you guess yeah, right. My I'm guilty pleasure to... is magic wand. Period. Wand, <laughs> wand, wine. Wand, wine. I'm oh, yeah. telling you. That, let's <laughs> let's get to it. All right. Um. I mean, you you, you answering these so well. You're doing very doing very <laughs> well on this. Uh, a woman that you look up to. Oh, can they be you know, deceased? Any, yeah, oh, be my grandmother. Really? Mm-hmm. She, she instilled raised some me. stuff in you. Oh man, that woman was a beast. Yeah. Why? She just. You know, like, I think that she wasn't that great of a mother to her children. Mm. And I feel like she had a second chance with us as her grandchildren. And so she did a lot of things differently with us. Okay. And um, she poured a lot of love into my life. And I feel like my dad was incarcerated. You know, my mom, you know, she was the only one from Taiwan living in the States. They kicked her off base and she had to raise four kids. And so she gave two kids, which was me and my sister, to my grandmother. And she did a damn good job. Shouts out to all the grandmothers. So shout out. Being mothers. Shouts out to my grandmother. You know what it is. Yeah, she took over that role, and I just feel like she just made me into who I am. Like, she instilled a lot. Yeah. Like, I think, Grandma, you're the reason why I don't give a fuck. (laughs) She really used to be like, don't gossip, don't be. And so I'll be like, okay, so I'm not a part of that. I feel like I am the gossip, but I don't like to be a part of people's shit. You know, I'll just stay where I'm at. Live your life and get it. Thanks, Granny. Childhood celebrity crush. Ooh, childhood celebrity. Okay. Childhood. Growing up. Oh, Bow Wow was it for me. Really? Mm-hmm. And then I look at him now, I'd be like, why Bow Wow? Everybody loved Bow Wow, though. <laughs> no, I did. I, I mean, when I tell you, like, I could cry over Bow Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. But and I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure B2, if that's the case, that B2K. Wasn't, it was, was more Bow Wow? Mm-hmm. I was in love with Bow Wow. Wow. Like, love. Like, like love. But I could, could, could he get everything. it now? Hell to the no. And I'm not. You, <laughs> shout shout no. out to, to Mr. Moss. This is my shout bro. Shout out. No. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> but it just. It, all right. I was in love with him. I don't know why. I was. You, you, oh, you and know you why? know who else I was in love with? Who? Leonardo DiCaprio. Ooh, we G. Well, he's still. He could probably still get Ooh. it now, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Yep. <laughs> his, his longevity, he's, he's still out my here God. knocking him down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, favorite cereal? Oh, I don't really like cereal. But you didn't grow up liking cereal? Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. But if I have to eat cereal, I'll say like Honey Nut Cheerios. Ew, I'm basic. Uh, I mean, no, that's the, the or my, like, my kids love Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, Rice remember, Krispies? 
Yeah. That's all I ate. Yeah, see, I'm a chocolate dude. So I have to do like Cocoa Puffs, Cocoa Pebbles. Because mm. like, I don't okay. like milk. So, like, right. See, that's what I'm saying. The, the white stuff, it always creeped me out. So I like yeah, but if then it was get brown. Soggy, the Fruity Pebbles get really soggy. That is true. You that's like cereal. That? I mean, but see, uh, I, I, that's mm-hmm. cereal because we all can relate because we grew up. Yeah. It's your favorite color. Now it's pink. Really? Yeah, I was never. I think I'm getting girly as I'm getting older. Maybe I'm getting softer as really? I'm getting older. Yeah. That's interesting. Before it was like neutrals and black or blue. Now I'm pink. I love pink. I ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Rock your pink life. And as we say this, because, I mean, this has been an amazing conversation, but Thank we you. always like to wrap it up. When okay. we talked about family, we talked about kids, we yes. talked about business, mm-hmm. legacy at the end of the day, one word that describes April Jones. One word? One word. Peace. Really? Mm-hmm. As loud as you are. Peace. Peace. Mm-hmm. As loud as I am, that's a part of who I am, but my whole being is peace. I just want peace. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this has been an up-close and personal conversation with the peaceful April Jones. I'm peaceful. I ain't hostile, y'all. I promise you I ain't. <laughs> I'm just passionate. There it is. It's Nick Cannon 1. It's a great Thank conversation. You,